Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaIrvingGarden.ca. Composting worms are the engine that drives the nutrient cycle in my garden. They eat organic material in my garden, helping to break it down, releasing plant-available nutrients, beneficial microbes, and plant growth hormones. Over the course of a winter here, the ground will often freeze up to 2 meters in depth, or 7 feet. So, how is it that I'm able to overwinter red wiggler composting worms within my garden, even though they're not well acclimated to freezing temperatures? Today I'm going to talk about how I overwinter red wigglers within my own garden, so that they can continue to drive the nutrient cycle year after year without needing to be reintroduced. In order to understand how this happens, we need to know a little bit more about the worms we rely on. In my garden, there are two major classes of worms. The native earthworm that has no issues overwintering, but reproduction is slower and they eat slower, and the high-powered red wigglers that reproduce quickly and can process far more organic material. I added some red wiggler worm castings to my garden while planting in 2013, and I have seen them every year since in my garden. Red wiggler compost worms can survive temperatures as low as 0 Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit and as high as 35 Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. So with the freezing temperatures being less than ideal for the red wigglers in my garden, how is it that they overwinter? I don't have a constant source of worm castings, so it's safe to assume the worms are overwintering. The key to their overwintering may be in how they reproduce. Worms reproduce through the use of cocoons, which are essentially eggs that hatch multiple worms. Cocoons have been shown to successfully sustain temperatures as low as negative 13.5 Celsius or 7 Fahrenheit for up to two weeks, and negative 8 Celsius or 17 Fahrenheit for up to three months, making it possible with a little help to overwinter in the garden. I do a number of things that may help the red wiggler cocoons overwinter in my garden. The first is I always have food available for the red wigglers. I continue to add free and local resources to my mulch layer and compost areas. Red wigglers are surface feeders, and the mulch that I provide gives them a constant source of food. By keeping a constant source of food for the worms, that allows their population numbers to stay fairly high. The second thing that may help the red wigglers overwinter in my garden is the cold compost in the back corner. In the fall, I add surplus autumn leaves and brewing waste to the back cold compost corner. The pile provides an insulating layer and a food source. Although the ground may freeze in my garden, the insulation properties of leaves, soil, and snow help prevent the soil temperatures from dropping low enough to harm the cocoons. Soil, mulch, and snow cover have been shown to insulate the ground and reducing the temperature fluctuations when compared to air temperatures. When I create my fall hot compost, I remove the bulk of the leaf mold and cider waste to help inoculate the pile. I always leave a thin layer of the cold compost from last year underneath this year's new cold compost pile. This ensures that the pile has red wigglers for next year. As I just mentioned, I use the remainder of last year's cold compost to inoculate my hot compost with beneficial bacteria that get the process started. My hot compost often gets between 45 and 55 degrees Celsius or 113 to 131 Fahrenheit, making it too hot for the worms to withstand. The pile takes a while to heat up. And as it does, the red wigglers will move to the extremity of the compost pile or the surrounding garden soil where temperatures are nicer. As the pile cools down, they'll migrate back in, releasing their cocoons as they go. This pile will stay warm and slowly cool off over a number of weeks to months, helping the red wigglers get through some of the winter months. It is important to make your compost pile and mulch your garden early enough in the fall so the worms are still active. This gives them time to adapt to the changing situation and lay as many cocoons as possible. Although many red wigglers and their cocoons are likely to die over the winter months, a large enough number of them must survive in order to maintain a healthy population of red wigglers within my garden. Paired with their high reproductive rate that can see red wiggler populations double in as little as 30 days, these methods seem to be effective at allowing me to overwinter red wigglers in my garden. These results are based on my observations only. However, there is a chance if you implement some of the same techniques that I do with a one-time investment in some red wigglers, you may be able to overwinter them, enjoying the benefits for years to come. If you would like to learn how to make a simple hot compost from free and local resources, check out the link on screen now and make sure to subscribe to catch all future episodes.